Hello, I'm Michael Mann for Bike Social. Welcome to Donington Park. It's the final Bennett's track day of 2022. And in this video, we're going to be looking at how professional athletes interpret instruction. Joining me are British Olympic gold winners, Amy Williams and Victoria Pendleton. And they're going to be instructed by not any old fools. We've got TT legends, Peter Hickman and John McGuinness, our Bennett's and Bike Social ambassadors. And we say thanks to Triumph for supporting this video and also providing the Speed Triple 1200 RRs and to Alpine Stars for providing some snazzy kit for the girls. Well, here's the bike they're going to be riding. So it's the Triumph Speed Triple 1200RR. It's new for 2022. It came out at the, at the beginning of the year, was in shops early on. It was based very much on the 1200RS, the naked version. The big difference with the bike is the, this, what they call bikini fairing with the single headlamp and it's got electronic suspension. So it's got the sort of latest gen Olin electronic suspension. It's all adjustable via the TFT uh, screen. It's the 1160cc inline triple. So it's a beautiful sound, 177 horsepower, at about 10,000 RPM and costs 17,950 pounds. There's loads of adjustability with this bike as well. It's, it's a nice smooth progression on the throttle. The brakes are beautifully sharp and uh, it's going to be ideal really for on track and what they're used to today. But yeah, overall, look, a, a beautifully comfortable, very stylish bike. And I think that Amy and Victoria are going to get on really, really well with it. So Amy, you've been out first session. Thankfully the sun's shining, but tell me, how did you enjoy the triumph? Oh, you know what, it was great. I was uh, really nervous beforehand for sure and haven't sat on a bike for a little while, but you know what, the triumph was great. Um, I felt really comfortable on it straight away. Three laps round and um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back out on it now. You've had uh, John and Peter give you some feedback already. What yeah. do you, what are you, are you going to be focusing on anything particular for the next session? Or is it simply just to be follow and see where the track goes and get be familiar with the lines? Or? Yeah, John said um, I was just really stiff and I knew that I could really feel myself particularly like in the corner. I kept telling myself, chill out, chill out. And then I'd get to a straight and I would, I'd kind of like loosen off my arms. <laughs> That was definitely the first feedback that John noticed. And 100%, yeah, I totally agree with that. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, you're out again very, very soon, so I'll let you get ready and your helmet on. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Uh, Vicky, first session, you've already had a chance to kind of get familiar with the circuit to a degree and the bike. Oh, I know you need about three laps, but how was it already? I mean, it's really good. It was nice to get a feel for the environment. Um, it's, I think it's quite normal to feel a little bit of you know, an anxiety, feel a bit unsure because it's something new, it's something different. But I'm sure with each lap we'll gain confidence and we'll take on little bits of advice. So I'm looking forward to getting back out there. And John came by with you, didn't he? Yes. He was out there with you. Did he give you, and I saw John and Peter yes. both talking to you and Amy afterwards, did they? I mean, it's such a blessing to have Peter and John here to give us um, tips and advice and obviously following a legend like that on the track is something that only, people can only dream of doing so I feel very very fortunate to have such a wealth of knowledge and experience helping Amy and I who are both relative novices. Of course if you come to a Bennett's track day you can have John McGuinness teach you all the time. So what did he say about the next session? You're out very soon. Are you going to focus on anything in particular? We're just going to focus on just the lines, really, like learning the track. It's all a lot to take in when it's all new, new bike, new track, new experience. So we're just going to take it step by step, little pointers, following a good line and just maintaining speed, like trying not to touch the brakes very much. Good stuff. All right, I'll let you get your helmet on because I think you're out very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah. Forget about gears, concentrate on brakes and throttle, body yeah. position, track position. Let it flow, and the faster you go, the better the bike feels anyway. Because then we can flow with the group, you know, then it's anybody, you're just that little bit off float, just yeah. going with some of the guys then. I've seen three figures on the on the speedo down there, down here. We're in 205 mile an hour now, so we're over over the ton down here. Eyes up is a big thing. You go wherever you look. Just try and be fluid with it. That's the thing. Not not stiff. Just nice and fluid. And then I'm off the throttle. And then obviously you've got no grip on the corner. No no worries going fast on the straight. It doesn't worry me or scare me the speed. Okay, now I'm out the corner. Go go go. Trying to think, oh, I need to weight the peg, I need to do that. Like, just forget that, just ride the bike. You can say they're both competitive. They want to learn. If you get through the day nice and safe, your first day, I think you've ticked all the boxes. I think that, that's where they are at the minute. But you've been teaching Atty both Amy and Victoria, haven't you, this morning? Um, bit of a nervy start, but not necessarily for you. <laughs> well, I don't know, was it? I mean, you kind of. Yeah, it was fine for me. You got MBEs and CBEs <laughs> following you around. No, it was, uh, it's been interesting actually, and yeah, to see how well they picked it up. Victoria had a little bit more confidence to start the day, uh, but then actually with Amy, I, I did the last two sessions with Amy, and she's picked up, she's at least doubled her speed within them couple of sessions. Um, really started to, we actually even caught other people in the last session, so um, yeah, nice to see the, the progression already. It's something, I've done a bit of instruction before, I haven't done it for a long time now. But um, I have done quite a bit of instruction in the past, and it's always good when someone listens to what you're saying and then applies it. It's one thing understanding what someone's telling you and, and knowing what to do. It's another thing being able to do it. Um, but yeah, both of them have been able to, to apply what me and John have been saying to them and uh, yeah, go faster and safer. Amy, Victoria, uh, well, what a day we've had. We've been treated to, to some good weather, some good riding. You both enjoyed it. You're both here. You're both smiling. So that's a good start. I'm going to start with you. Um, tell me about your sort of the, the, the process, because you, I think, uh, it, it's safe to say, were particularly nervous first thing. Yeah. And as a, a an observer, I certainly saw those nerves fly away after the first session, and then you were already focused on something else to learn and something else to learn. In fact, both of you, as soon as you came in from each session, you were just desperate for feedback, which I guess was the point of this video, isn't it? So how, how did you sort of progress through the morning? Yeah, for sure, I was really nervous. I think I've just had so small amount of hours on a bike, having taken my test like four years ago. And so for me, it was just like getting into the bike, like, how do I ride this again? What am I doing? not even really worried about the track or the speed. Um, it was just physically the bike. But as soon as you got on it, um, and just being able to follow people around and to have Hickey and uh, McGuinness out there, who I totally 100% trust, you know, awesome guys. Just the confidence being able to follow them. And if they're doing it, I'm gonna do it. And like you said, every single lap that you went round, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's a bit better. And oh, okay, if I do this, that's a bit better. Um, I definitely thought too much in those first laps. Your mind was boggled. And then the more I went round, the more I just emptied it out um, on their advice, of course. Uh, and yeah, and it just started to feel a little, little better every single time. Vicky, how about you? Well, I think Amy and I both have a mindset where you know, we've come from a, a background of sport and training. and We love learning new skills and being in at the deep end and definitely want to push ourselves and make the most of every opportunity. So we were like really keen to know how, how can we improve, take on as much information as we can and focus it in the next opportunity to practice. And it's like little increments, like little steps you've got to take. Remember one or two things, focusing throughout the lap. But I'm going to say, the adrenaline has been high for several hours and I do appreciate that it's quite a lot to take on board for your first experience and it's been it's been brilliant so there are a few things that fell out of my brain while I was going around and then I go, next next lap yes I'm going to do this corner better and then pick it up bit by bit very gradual but really good fun so there's a lot of information to take on isn't a there? lot you, of info because like you're getting back onto a bike for the first time a bike that you've never ridden at a circuit you've never ridden on a track that you've never been to <laughs> It, there's a lot going on here, and it's it's almost we put kind of put you under a lot of pressure early on to, to to take all of that on. But with your backgrounds, with your sporting backgrounds, did did you feel as though that kind of helped? I think probably we're both quite good at keeping our cool. We're both used to pushing ourselves and our bodies um, and our minds in the most um, you know 
extreme situation in an Olympic final or something like that. So I think we, in some ways, hopefully you are prepared for, for taking on board something like this, but that doesn't mean anyone can't give it a go. When you have excellent instructors and you have you know, wonderful, you know, you have great equipment, you have good instructors, you have everything explained to you in the safety briefings, such a, so, it's so fun. I mean, I love learning new skills, but it's so nice to learn something completely different and, and just have a buzz, like a really good day out. You used to, well, you were used to going down a, a, a skeleton run at, at 80 miles an hour, is that right? I yeah. mean, the, the, yeah. are there any of the sensations that you experience today similar to, to how you, when you were going through your training? I think, yeah, uh, skeleton track, the fastest I got to was 92 miles per hour and you're an inch off the ice. But the biggest thing is that you and your sled move as one. You know, you don't fight each other. If you fight, that's when you skid or that's when you fall off. And I think that's why I was so concerned maybe about the bike and was I going to sort of be at one? And I know when you watch the guys and being with the TT, you know, they are at one with their bike and they move and they glide. And I just think that must be magical. I mean, the Triumph bike feels amazing. You know, we've got these great leathers, Alpine Stars, you know, and I'm comfortable when I'm on the bike. Everything feels good. Uh, and that actually was quite a surprise that it naturally clicked into place quite quickly. And then like sort of Vicky was saying, your brain almost goes into the athlete. You're trying to, to perfect yourself almost probably too quickly, trying to expect so much. You want feedback as soon as you get off that bike you buzz, 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 you know, hickey, take off your helmet, let me tell you, like, da, 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 and he can say it, and then you want to get back out and manage to kind of perfect those skills. So I think it's like little bit by little bit and that confidence, I think, yeah, we're probably quite good at hiding. <laughs> Still, the nerves and the butterfly in the pit of the stomach is, it's real, but I think just that mindset and just tell yourself, I can do this. I've just done it for the last three sessions. I can now go out in the fourth session and do it, like, yeah, that, that definitely, I think, the old athlete comes into play. I was going to say, when you were cycling, of course, you, you're used to having that core uh, strength. You're used to being at speed on two wheels. So that balance, momentum, those kind of ethics are very translatable. And horse riding, of course, mm. you do a lot of that. They're very translatable to the, the kind of skills you need, physical skills you need to control a bike, run a circuit here. A lot of, you know, the sports that I've been involved with have been a lot to do with core strength and lateral balance and those kind of things. But so many things, when you try a new sport, come down to the fact that you have to breathe, relax, and look as far ahead as you can and enjoy it. And, and ultimately, I think as soon as you tense up and you get small in your own little world, it starts to feel uncomfortable. But quite often, more often than not, if you relax into it, have faith in your instructors, faith in your equipment, you can just enjoy it. And hey, who doesn't want to chase a buzz like that? I can see why it's massively addictive. So you're both keen to come back, aren't you, already? Yeah, definitely. I can see, like, why would I go out on a road bike? You know, what, I, mean, why, I mean, why would I take a bike out on a road with traffic lights, people, cars? Like, just come on a track day where it's empty and clear and you only have to think about what you're doing on your bike. And, OK, it's a bit unnerving when people whiz past, although that started to happen less and less. But, yeah, like, like you said, like, we've got amazing instructors here and the confidence that you have in that, then it gives you confidence that they're saying you're, you know, thumbs up and you're coming along and Hickey's like, come on, come on, come on. Like, you're like, OK, he thinks I can go faster here. I'm going to go faster. And I think that's a great feeling and that... I feel really chuffed that I've done it. Yeah. I feel really proud of myself that I've actually done it. <laughs> <laughs> and you swapped instructors, didn't you, as well? Right. What, are you, what are you sort of the key takeaways from, from John and, what, and, you know, and Peter and what they had to say? I mean, first of all, we're under no illusion that this is the dream scenario. We were being coached by legends. <laughs> legends, not just, not just the elite, legends um, of the sport. So, I mean, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for allowing us this opportunity. It's really been a a gift to, to be to be instructed by, you know, McGuinness and Hickman. I mean, McGuinness, the, like the last thing he said to me, he goes, I feel confident in your ability and your, your manoeuvring. He goes, I would like to see you give me a bit more. Like he, he, he felt that I could have given it a little bit more gas. So I would have gone out next time and just tested myself a little bit in terms of just being a bit more confident basically, especially, uh, you know, after the first bend and you're sort of going, I said, it's a bit blind. You come over and you can't really see where you're going. And he was like, have confidence in the track and your ability and go for it. So that's what I try and do to float a bit more like Amy.
but I need a bit more <laughs> aggression. Like, <"Arr." laughs> so um, going back to your sort of elite athletics days, you were fine tuning tiny little elements day by day by day by day, but I guess from this day has been just a whole load of information shoved up on you. But even so, we said it earlier on, you come in after each session just be absolutely so eager for feedback straight away. Is that how it was back in the day? I think when you're someone who's ha you know, spent your life pushing, pushing yourself to, to achieve a goal, you tend to be very self-critical, very sort of, you want everything analysed, you want to have very factual, swift, concise feedback immediately. A lot of people think, oh, you must be really good at it, but that doesn't mean that we, you know, you focus on what you want to improve. So criticism is really important, like getting some pointers and knowing how to improve. I want that information and I think that is something that's very much inbuilt with, with being an athlete and being coached, is you have to take on board what you can and make the most of it. And, and we've just been to make like two sponges today, trying to absorb as much as possible, but there's always ways to improve. And I think that's why you'd want to come back and see what, what you can build on next time. Of course, of course. Same for you, Amy? Yeah, I totally agree. I think you're very used to constantly almost being told negative feedback, isn't it? You could lift better. You could shift your hips and do this. You can be one centimetre to the left or the right. And I think you are constantly very used to that as athletes, being told the things that you can improve on. Um, and then you want to go out and execute that. And yes, here, we're definitely not doing it all the time and we're definitely not consistent. But I think for me, it's I, I, ahead of myself, I can see how good it could feel. Yeah. You know, I, I've watched these guys, they are like magic on their bikes. You know, they move and they're so smooth and I want to feel what that feels like. Not near that yet, but there was a little glimpse and I was like, oh, this feels so good and it's so smooth. Whatever that downhill section is, that yeah. really nice. Yeah, that bit. And I was like, oh, I can look around a bit. Oh, this is really nice. Now I want to feel that in those really tight corners that I really hate the hairpin. Like, okay, I don't, don't have that feeling there. And as soon as you start to see the professionals racing here, you get a whole new level of respect. And in the TT as well. Oh, massive respect for these guys and these riders. And I've always had that. And the more I've spent time with them and yeah, I mean, they are very skilled. They know what they're doing. Um, yeah, and they've they're just got that flowing magic, haven't they? You see Peter and John now on either a, a skeleton. Um, no, I teach them. Uh, yeah. Or a horse, even. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Going to be out of their comfort zone, too. <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much, both of you, for joining us and thank giving you. in your feedback and experience. Uh, and it sounds very much like we're going to see you again at the Hopefully. track. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you once again to Triumph for supporting us with this video, for bringing the bikes down to us, and also to Alpine Stars for creating such a mega snazzy kit. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. You too can also uh, enjoy Peter Hickman and John McGuinness's tuition at a Bennett's track day. We should have some dates coming out. Uh, well, it depends on when you're watching this, but it'll be about November of 2022. And uh, look, we hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've taken much from it. If you've got any comments, queries, questions, or thoughts, uh, let us know in the, in the section below. Thanks again. <laughs> lost my eyelashes. How are we looking at you, buddy boy? Action. I'll do a thank you to Triumph, thank you to Alpine Stars, and don't forget, look out for the dates for next year's blah, blah, blah.